excuses, excuses, excuses. <laughs> Where's a good one when you need one? <laughs> Welcome to Over the Hump. George Washington is quoted as saying it is better to offer no excuse than a bad excuse. <laughs> I was talking recently with uh, someone in regard to church attendance, and I'm not the kind of guy who tries to guilt anybody up about whether they're at church or not at church. I want their motive to be pure if they are, and their motive to be pure if they aren't. But we were talking about it, and, and uh, you know, one of the things I was telling them was, I said, you know, church comes in many forms, uh, but I firmly believe in the gathering together of God's children. Uh, it doesn't have to be in, necessarily in a building or under some organization's name, uh, but that's one way that we do that. And others have other ways, and that's fine, but, you know, I do believe in gathering together, but I believe the Bible is very clear about us gathering together and not forsaking that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let me talk first about excuses. As my friend began to try to give me some reasons why they had not been to church in a while and uh, stuff, I, I, I began to listen and I thought, you know, maybe, maybe they should know what George Washington said to offer no excuses better than to, to offer a bad excuse. Because Satan is so good at tricking us up in our mind, because Satan will offer us up excuses that sound very good at first. Satan will trick us up by, by telling us, you know, we're tired this morning, or, or we're so busy, or, or there are other things I need to get done today. And little by little, those lies become more and more obvious if we buy into the first ones. And so today, as we go over the hump, I want to remind you what the writer of Hebrews had to say about getting together with other Christians in an environment where you can be accountable, uh, where you can worship together, where you can be under and be a part of the teaching of God's Word. Uh, in chapter 10 of Hebrews, the writer begins by uh, making a very clear statement as to who Christ is, what Christ has done, and who we are in Christ. And what Christ has established as far as our coming to him and boldly entering into his throne room and, and those type of things. And then he says three things specifically, starting in verse 23. He says, let us hold fast for the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Then he says this, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting or encouraging one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. First, he talks about our firm faith. He says, hold fast, fast to the faith that we confess. And then he talks about how we need to be encouragers to one another, how we need to stir one another up. With my friend, my hope in talking with him was not to bring any kind of guilt or or shame or any kind of thing like that. Satan will do a good enough job of trying to do that. I want to be the person that encourages them, lets them know, you know what, you 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 are missed. You know what, we love you. Uh, we we don't consider ourselves any better than you are, and we're never going to give up on you, uh, so that they know that it's not about church attendance. Uh, but then the third thing is the encouragement not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And why is that? Why, why would that be important to the writer of Hebrews? Well, again, we go back to what he's trying to communicate to us in saying, hold fast to your faith. Hold fast to that hope. That's not easy out in the world. That's not easy in the day-to-day -day living. That's not easy when we're being hit with uh, this circumstance, that circumstance, this trial, this situation, that situation. 
we need others around us. We need to be with others who are walking the walk of faith as well. For in those others, we are going to find someone, certainly, who, who is encouraged and strong and moving along well. And we're going to find somebody who's probably struggling even more than we are that we can encourage. And it's in that environment that we help each other not to be swerving with our faith, but to be unswerving. And then secondly, where else can we come together uh, except by coming together as believers in, in some place, in some time, and in some way to truly stir one another up and spur one another on in the walk of faith. The, the importance of not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together is this. You're needed. You're needed in the assembly. I'm needed in the assembly. God created as he shaped us for the very purpose of bearing one another's burdens, of loving one another, of forgiving one another, all the one another verses of the Bible. So as you go over the hump with me today on this Wednesday, let me encourage you in this as often as you can as often as is possible. Be together with others. It's not, it's not about that Sunday morning service alone. It's about the opportunities that you have. It may be just going to your life group this week. It, it may be uh, attending something you've never attended, like coming to Celebrate Recovery, for those of you who are part of our church here in Vero Beach. Uh, it could be stepping out of your comfort zone and serving others. It could be that person that you met at church, calling them up, spending a little time on the phone with them. But let me read again to you what the writer of Hebrews said when he said, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some. You're always going to find someone who's got an excuse. But exhort one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Now, Ben Franklin said this. He said, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. Let me say that again. He that is good at making excuses is seldom good at anything else. As we go over the hump, may you be encouraged today, but may you also be an encourager to somebody else. God bless you. Have a great hump day.